In this video we're going to look at how the manager of a virtual private server can set up FTP access to that server if they don't have a control panel integration with the shared services. If you do have that you do everything through website panel and it's heaps easier but if you don't you got to do it yourself uh, this is how we do it. We're currently connected to a VPS installation which we've set up for this video using a uh, remote desktop connection. Um, apologies that it's a bit small, uh, the video size is not as high as a VPS is normally so things may fall off the screen a wee bit but we'll see how we go. So the first thing to note is by default when you get a VPS installation the Microsoft FTP service is uh, usually installed and running. We can have a look here in the services applet and there it is, Microsoft FTP service currently set to running, uh, so to started even. You don't necessarily need to use the Microsoft flavor if you want to install FileZilla or something like that or another FTP server, it's your VPS, you can do whatever you want. But in this instance we're going to demonstrate it with the Microsoft FTP. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is set up a folder that is going to act as our FTP root. So I've set one up here, it's called FTP root and we've got a single empty text document in it right there. So that's what we're going to use, you can put whatever documents you want in but for the sake of this we're going to go with just a simple answer. The next thing to do is to set up one or more users or groups that are allowed to access the FTP. Now we're going to keep this very simple and we're going to just add a user that can do it. So if we look in our server manager here, through to our users section, we can just right click and say give me a new user. We'll call it FTP user. Give it a password. Actually we've got to, you've got to give it a reasonably complicated password because there are rules for this. And in this instance, we'll set the boxes so that the password never expires. Okay, and there's our user created FTP user. Now, optionally, we could set that user into a group, but most importantly, we've got to make sure that our user has sufficient access on our folder and our files to be able to do stuff with it. So if we look at the properties of our folder here, into security, we'll add our FTP user. There we are. And we'll give him, just for the sake of convenience, we'll give him full control. So there we are. So now our user has access to the file that we need. Next thing we need to do is to set up an FTP site that will respond to our requests. Uh, done through IIS. Let's get rid of these things here. Open up IIS into our sites node and we'll create a new FTP site. We'll call it test FTP site and we will use the physical path that we just specified see FTP root there we are next we need to assign it to the IP address that we've got for this server so there we are we'll do that and we need to make sure that we change the SSL settings otherwise it will only connect with SSL we want it to be able to connect without so we'll uh, allow both actually which is allow SSL in the middle and we are going to allow basic authentication because we want to make sure that people who connect are actually authenticated and we want to specify the users who are allowed to access our FTP site so we're going to say FTP user which is the one that we did and we're going to give him read and write access to the server and we're going to hit finish our server is currently in a stopped state uh, as indicated by the uh, the blob on here so we'll go in here and we'll just restart it there we are and uh, all is good so now we've got to set up a connection to that server so for that we're going to go over to FileZilla on the client side here we have FileZilla, this is now on the client, we can see that the VPS is in the background. If I go uh, into my site manager, I'll just move that over there. We've got a new website set up with the IP address that we specified in the VPS and we've got our 
logon type set to normal as opposed to anonymous and everything here is just pretty standard apart from that so we've got the FTP user that we specified and we've got the password that we gave to that user now importantly we need to go into transfer settings and make sure the transfer mode is active we'll come back to this in a minute but if it is active we should be good to go and we can hit the connect button and we can see here we've managed to connect to the server and we've got our new text document here which is available to us which we can now use in the normal way so that's fine we can just disconnect from that server because that now works now coming back to this passive versus active FTP setup we've set it up as active here in the demonstration because it's just the quickest and easiest way to get it set up ideally you'd want it set up as a passive connection and the best way to figure that out is to actually look through the documentation on the web follow the instructions there it's a little bit more in depth than we've got time to uh, to do here because it involves firewall changes and all sorts of things like that have a look on the web you'll find the instructions but this is a very simple way of getting it set up using Microsoft FTP service alternatively if you wanted to use FileZilla that has support for active and passive uh, and it's quite easy to set up uh, as well so maybe you want to have a look at that as well but either way that should get you started, okay?